What's up guys, I'm Random Frank P, and today I have a very exciting keyboard build for you, and I have a feeling that a lot of people are going to be pumped for this. We're going to be checking out the Novel Keys NK65 Entry, an entry level mechanical keyboard to get you into customs. So the NK65 Entry is one of the more interesting and dare I say groundbreaking keyboards on the market right now because it gives everyone a chance to kind of get started in the custom keyboard community for just $95 except on launch day it sold out in 40 seconds, so keep your fingers crossed for a restock. As you can see, it comes with its own carrying case for storing or bringing your keyboard with you on the go, which you rarely ever see included with a keyboard. And inside that top sleeve, we have a VIA card, which is information on their software, and a coiled USB-C cable. We'll talk about that stuff more in a second, but first, I really dig the Atomic Purple Polycarbonate case. The black aluminum plate and the PCB also looks nice and stealthy, and flipping it over, there are no flip out feet, but the case is designed with this eight degree angle. You have two large rubber pads so it doesn't slide around on your desk. But man, visually, I am loving this. I even went out of my way to pick up the 1998 original Tomy Gengar figure from when I was a kid. And the Atomic Purple Game Boy Color, all good vibes. But real quick, just to touch on it with that included coil cable. As you can see, it's probably a bit different than the coil cables you're used to seeing on this channel and in the keyboard community. It definitely has this landline look to it, and it's a glossy dark brown, I want to say. I don't know if it's just my eyes playing tricks on me, but it's not black. So needless to say, I'll be using one of my own cables for this build. Okay, so as a pre-built hot swap keyboard that's meant to get your foot in the door, the only thing you have to really pick up on your own are switches and keycaps. No building, no soldering. But I will take it apart to show you real quick what's inside and how it's constructed. And it's pretty straightforward. There's just five screws holding the top of the case to the bottom. Uh, the PCB and plate are screwed into the top case as well. And this design allows for no visible screws once it's assembled. You kind of just push through the PCB to separate the two. And I will say one of the screws holding my PCB to the plate was stripped when I first went to unscrew it. So I did have to strip it even more, unfortunately, to take it out. Uh, thankfully, I already have some leftover screws from previous builds. So it wasn't a big issue for me, but I'll chalk that one up to like a factory flaw, if you will. But then again, it does come pre-built for you. And once the PCB was out of the case, the plate is still screwed into that top housing if you need to remove that. But underneath the PCB and laying on the bottom housing is something that I think every keyboard could take advantage of hands down. And that's this silicone dampener. This insert is really meant to absorb those micro vibrations from your switches and just the case overall when you're typing or gaming. And it'll definitely help lessen the audible resonance and stuff. So it'll be a quieter board, obviously depending on your switches, of course. By the way, comment down below, who's your favorite Pokemon? The included stabilizers are factory lubed, thumbs up, and they're plate mounted. So if you did ever want to pop them out and mod them even further, it'll be easy to do so. Our PCB has these switches south facing, ensuring all cherry profile keycap and switch compatibility. And with the PCB supporting three and five pin switches, you aren't limited in terms of your selection either. Cherry, Gatteron, Kale, Otemu, plate mount, PCB mount, Mount Everest, you get the idea. Now, as for our switches we're going to use, since we have, you know, an affordable keyboard here, the NK65, I wanted to keep prices low all around if I could, so I went with Gatteron Yellow. You can find these anywhere from like 10 to 20 bucks, sometimes a little bit more with shipping, but they are very affordable. They are linear and pretty similar to red, so just a 5 gram uh, difference in terms of the weight. And with a little extra TLC, you can really take these to the next level. Because for being so inexpensive, they are very smooth. I did add milky tops to my switches, as well as applying a switch film, and lubed all my switches with Crytox 205 Grade Zero. So again, for being some of the cheaper ones out there, now they're honestly kind of up there with inks, I'd say, after these modifications. Like I said, they are kind of hard to find right now, but depending on how many you need, you can get them anywhere from like 20 to 30 bucks. And another reason why I went with yellows, well, first off, I just prefer linear switches. But second, I'm like, I'm a freak. I want my keyboard to be matching my switches, even though you won't see them. So with the yellow stems in our Gatteron yellows, it's going to perfectly complement the atomic purple case, because yellow is a complement of purple. I'm sick, guys. Send help. Then since the PCB is hot swap, you literally just pop them right into place. Okay, so next up is where the entire keyboard process comes together and it could take a turn for better or for worse, and that's keycaps, okay? So with the NK65 entry being so affordable, this is gonna give you the option to still stick to a budget build or splurge on your keycaps. And the thing with keycaps is some of them, if you do some research, you might find a, a set that you really love, but it's either an interest check, a group by phase, they're years away from ever coming to your doorstep, so the struggle is real. But 
I know like the Razer PPT keycaps, the newer ones, they're around 30 bucks, which are not a bad option if you wanted to go like all black for this. Uh, Novel Keys even sent over their Novel Keys uh, Vaporwave keycap set, which is nice. It's only $50 as well, so still affordable in the end. But I'm not the biggest fan of the colorway here. With this purple, I think it's too much purple and like the different hues of it. So what I did was I pretty much just reused a set that I already had that uh, in the end I think looks really good and that's GMK Tokyo Knights. But I really like the primary black keycaps with some of the accented colors and just a little splash of purple. I do think it's a perfect fit. But when it came down to it, one thing was missing. And like I said before, shout out to Gengar. I knew this keyboard needed an artisan to tie it all together. And that's where this key from S-Craft Studios come into play, this handmade Gengar keycap. I think it looks perfect. They make some killer stuff over there. They have a few different Pokemon available as well, but they also sell in group buy, so they aren't really available right now, unfortunately. You have to scour the aftermarkets. But for being handmade, it looks perfect. You can see him chilling in there. He's got like the purple smoke around him. It just fits this keyboard perfectly. And yes, in terms of height, it is a bit taller than the stock cherry profile we have on the keyboard. But a lot of artisans are either OEM or the SA profile. But I honestly don't mind it at all because I want it to stick out as an accent piece. That's the point of artisans. And also since the top is that clear resin, you really can't even tell when you're looking at it straight on. Okay, so the moment you've all been waiting for, we'll do the sound test now with these Gateron yellow switches. Again, I applied a switch film and lubed them with Crytox 205 grade zero, but we're gonna see the true beauty and the work of that silicone dampener inside. Get ready. That's some butter. So as you heard, I do think these lubed and switch filmed Gateron yellows sound very good. And again, helped out by that silicone dampener inside. And the stabilizers also sound pretty good as well. And that's without any further modifications. Now, yes, like I said, I did lube my uh, Gateron yellows and I did apply that switch film. And honestly, just from my testing and comparing back and forth, I don't think the switch film is worth it in this case. Uh, that's just my two cents, but really impressed here. I love that silicone dampener here and I could just tell it did a lot cutting out that resonance and also depending on your keycap set and what switches you use, it'll sound a lot different, but this is me and my use case in my build. So to wrap this up, let's just talk pros and cons real quick about the NK65 entry. I mean, pros goes without saying, but for a pre-built $95 keyboard that all you need to do is apply switches and keycaps to, it is a fantastic price and you know value overall. The Atomic Purple, I think looks killer. I love polycarbonate cases and this just is mwah. The VIA software that you can use to change up all the lighting and stuff is very easy to use. It also has like a switch tester and stuff built in. Uh, you can't really see the RGB on this build, you know, when you're looking at it over top or top down, you know? It does slightly shine through on the side of the cases because again, it's polycarbonate. So do keep that in mind. I know for me, it's the absolute last thing I care about with a custom build is RGB. And I'm sure 95% of the keyboard community out there could say the same. RGB is just not a necessity when it comes to this. Yes, you could still see it shining through in the bottom of the case. Um, but since we have the south facing switches and the LED light is on the bottom and our keycaps don't have any shine through characters or anything, it's just a solid PPT keycap, there is no RGB illuminating really. So you're not gonna see it, but again, I don't mind it at all. With the software, I just kept it purple, other than the sock RGB light wave you saw before I downloaded and programmed it. But yeah, that could be a con to some people, definitely not me. Another thing I'll say is they do have like a quality control statement out there with these polycarbonate boards saying that there may be some you know, slight defects somewhere. I know for me, it's not visible to the eye at all. There's just a slight chip on the top and bottom of the inside. Uh, but again, that's you can't see it, so I don't care. But honestly, guys, for $95 for a pre-built entry-level mechanical keyboard, 
you cannot get a better value out there right now. I challenge you, go find a custom keyboard like this that is a better value. So in the end, it's gonna come down to pretty much what else you do to complete the build. So if you buy cheap keycaps and cheap switches, although I wouldn't you know, recommend the, the cheap necessarily, um, it's gonna still save you a lot of money. I know for me, with the case itself, GMK Tokyo Knights was 175, which Gadron Yellows were 20, I believe. And the Gengar keycap was, I think, around 60 bucks when they released it. I already had the Quill cable, so that's around 40 to 50 if you don't. So the absolute north end of this keyboard altogether is around $400, but again, you don't need to spend near 200 on a keycap set. There's more affordable options out there. You don't have to get an artisan. And switches, you can find pretty affordable depending on which type. But man, Novel Keys, big thumbs up. NK65 entry, uh, one of my favorite builds that I've done so far. And I love the looks of it. My voice is starting to go. And hopefully this gets restocked soon, because like I said, this sold out in 40 seconds. That's some demand. That'll wrap it up, guys. Hope you enjoyed this build. If you did, give this video a big thumbs up to show your support. Feel free to follow me on Twitter, at RandomFrankP. And last, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. Hope you enjoyed. Have a good day.